We do get the cloud cover out of here, but a couple of hours too late, unfortunately. Still better than nothing. We'll call it partly cloudy overall as we head through the night. Low temperatures mainly in the low to mid 30s and we get ready for a nice mix of sun and clouds over much of your day on Tuesday. A warmer day as well as we get into the low to mid 60s in many locations. If you like that, you're going to like the end of the week and especially the weekend. More on that coming up, but until then, first step four starts right now. Live from Killaland Media Group, Killaland News, first at four. Getting ready for a joint city school election. How Sioux Falls City Clerk is preparing with a team of veterans. Plus, learning about the eclipse, even though they couldn't really see it, how a professor at DWU made it happen. And later, President Joe Biden is once again trying to cancel student debt for some. A closer look at the plan. Well, good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Tom Hansen. And I'm Kelly Volk. Election equipment, including voting machines and ballots, went out today to all Sioux Falls precincts ahead of tomorrow's city and school board elections. So this morning when the teams came in, all I had to do was go to, okay, I work, I'm delivering for East, so this is all my pile of stuff here. So they grabbed their stuff, they loaded up, and now they're traveling all throughout the city here to make those deliveries. This is City Clerk Jeremy Washington's first time overseeing a municipal election in Sioux Falls. Find out how he's relying upon his military background in carrying out his duties coming up the next half hour. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office is warning people about another scam. Scammers are calling people trying to steal money while claiming to be with the Sheriff's Office. The caller says you miss jury duty and requests gift cards to pay fines or judgments over the phone. The sheriff's office will never contact you over the phone to collect warrants or fines. Uh, you would be asked to settle those in person. On Wednesday, the Sioux Falls Water Division will begin working on its annual hydrant flushing program. Crews will open hydrants to flush out sediment buildup starting on the north side of town and working to the south. Uh, people in the work area are encouraged to check the color of their tap water before using it. There is discoloration. Uh, run the faucet for a few minutes until it runs clear. Water discoloration is not a threat to your health or safety, but it may contain some staining. The Ellsworth Air Force Base announced it will begin controlled burns on base between the 12th and 14th this month. Controlled fires are intended to reduce the risk of uncontrolled, potentially damaging wildfires. Crews on site will be evaluating the weather conditions prior to the controlled burns each day to ensure public safety. Time now to get checked with uh, Adam, but I had my glasses all ready to go to yeah. just in case we got a break in the clouds. And what did you see? Nothing. Clouds? <laughs> I saw lots of clouds. Uh, not a good day for the eclipse, Adam. No, you had to really be an eagle eye to peek through the cloud cover in order to see any glimpse of the uh, partial solar eclipse that we had here in Kelowland. But I can maybe try and make things a little bit better. We're going to zoom out, take a look at the continental U.S., and go back in time about four hours. As we put this into motion, you can see the shadow of the solar eclipse going over the United States and then exiting up into New England and eastern portions of Canada. So, yeah, it's not the same effect, but still cool to at least see how it affects visible satellite here uh, in the weather department. Of course, much of the region was quiet. Not everybody, though. There's Terry Peak. 32 degrees, uh, northwest wind now at 14 miles per hour. Uh, areas up in the northern hills have seen upward of a foot of snow since Sunday. Uh, but we're going to finally get some better weather to talk about. At least it's not snowing here in Sioux Falls. It's been raining on occasion, and it's been a little on the breezy side. But yeah, here's downtown Sioux Falls, gray as can be. 46 with a west wind at 18 miles per hour. That mural on 10th Street, really uh, the only splash of color uh, that we can get. But we'll try and do a little bit better as we head into the day on Tuesday. Temperatures holding in the 40s in many locations. We're at 50 in Spencer, uh, 39 for Watertown, 44 in Mulbridge Pier and Aberdeen. 42 faith 37 though for Custer as well as Spearfish we will get down into the low to mid 30s for overnight low temperatures tonight. Tomorrow though is a nice day uh, both in terms of getting a little more sunshine and having temperatures climb into the low to mid 60s for much of Kilowand a couple of upper 50s though toward Watertown but that will be an exception East River to the west again 
Plenty of 60s to go around as long as you're not along the Wyoming or the Montana borders and you're in the 50s. Still, it's a step in the right direction. We'll take a few more steps like that as we head through the week, and we'll talk about that as we head through the hour. Thanks, Adam. Millions of Americans got their eyeballs off their screens and fixed to the skies today to see the solar eclipse. CBS's Jared Hill reports from New York, one of 15 states in the path of totality. A moment of awe as the solar eclipse cast darkness over daytime. The Southwest got the first glimpse. It got dark real quick and lightened up pretty neat. 31 million people live in the path of totality for this once in a generation marvel where the moon blocks out the sun. Crowds at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway enjoyed the greatest spectacle in the sky. Even though we knew what to expect, what to expect it was just mind blowing. In Russellville, Arkansas, more than 350 couples took the celestial cue and tied the knot, sealing it with an eclipse. It just seemed really fun and something unique. NASA estimated about 99% of people in the U.S. could see at least a partial eclipse, making this event the ultimate water cooler experience. Even scientists emphasize the social impact. It's far more about inspiration, awe, and joy for humanity. It's an event that just makes you feel a lot of things. The name of the viewing game today was cloud cover, with New England having the least of it, making for the best line of sight in America. For three or four minutes of peace and awe, it's the last total solar eclipse in the continental U.S. until 2044. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. The solar eclipse also offers NASA scientists and other researchers a rare window to conduct experiments that could potentially lead to improved weather forecasting and a better understanding of how solar events impact GPS. Cloudy skies did not stop the excitement of today's total solar eclipse across uh, at least one college campus in South Dakota. Professors Joan Lubin and Michael Farney have loved astronomy for years. Today, they shared that passion with the public at their eclipse viewing event at Dakota Wesleyan University in Mitchell. While the sun stayed mostly hidden, several people from the area still made their way out to learn about what an eclipse is. Coming up tonight on KELOLAND News, we'll have more on why both professors continue to share their passion for astronomy with others. A new attraction set to open next month will take up four storefronts in West Des Moines, Iowa. Blue Zoo is a 20,000 square foot aquarium that has been under renovation for almost a year and will bring 50 jobs to the metro. Marcus McIntosh with our CBS affiliate in Des Moines goes behind the scenes of the new zoo. Jordan Creek is now home to the fifth Blue Zoo in the nation, an interactive animal experience. It's expected to open in May, but we get a sneak peek inside the Blue Zoo under construction. And this is where we're going to start uh, your Blue Zoo experience. Operations manager Steve Spateri shows us around. So this is the portal that you enter the Blue Zoo. A world of fish, birds, and reptiles that may be like no other. This is the first thing you will see. This is a penny pond. A lot of waterfalls coming into here. You'll be able to pitch a penny, make a wish. From here, the experience intensifies. We're very interactive. We're very orientated towards uh, kids and having some sort of interactive experience and learning something through the interactivity. Interactivity is a key theme with Blue Zoo. This is going to be freshwater touch. So you'll be able to feed a koi, interact with them, pedicure fish, put your hand in there and they come and nibble on your... Really? That is just the beginning. This is going to be our shark tank. This is going to house our, our sharks, the black tips, and our mermaids. This is where our mermaids live as well. The out of water experience includes the bird sanctuary. You'll be able to have a little bit of a Snow White princess moment. The birds will come down and eat off your hand. We did not forget the reptiles. There are a number of snakes to see. And of course, for the tortoise, slow and steady wins the race. Some people have raised concerns about Blue Zoo not being accredited. Blue Zoo is currently not a member of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, the AZA, an independent accrediting organization for zoos and aquariums in America and the world. Something Blue Zoo does not want nor feel is necessary. A lot of people will get their nose a little bit out of joint when they hear me say that. You know, it's, it's one of those things that's another layer of, of government oversight um, that sort of interferes with us being able to do our jobs. The Blue Zoo is currently selling annual season passes. 
In West Des Moines, Marcus McIntosh, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader.